In this tutorial, I'll be discussing the forearm bones. In anatomical position, the ulna is the medial forearm bone, and the radius is the lateral forearm bone. Both of these bones are considered to be long bones because they're longer than they are wide. Proximally, they articulate with the humerus to help form the elbow joint, and distally, they articulate with some of our carpal bones to help form our radiocarpal joint or our wrist joint. These two bones also articulate with one another at their distal end, and also at their proximal end, although the proximal end here, um, the actual articulation is covered up by pronator teres. Where they articulate with each other, this is where we find the proximal and distal radio ulnar joints. The movements that occur at these two particular joints is pronation and supination, which are demonstrated here. Here you can see the forearm pronating, and now it's supinating. In this animation here, we have an anterior view of the left upper limb, and highlighted is the radius. I'm gonna first start by describing the bony markings of the radius, and then I'll move on to the ulna. At the proximal end of the radius, we find the head, and the head resembles the top of a nail. It's flat, like a top of a nail. And the head of the radius articulates with the capitulum, which I've just highlighted here. Just distal to the head, this is where we find the neck of the radius, similar to other long bones, just distal to the head is the neck. And distal to the neck, we have a prominence here, which is called the radial tuberosity. The radial tuberosity is a projection on the bone where biceps brachii will attach. The distal end of the radius is wider than the proximal end, and at this distal end here, we find the styloid process, this pointy projection here. And we also find the ulnar notch, which is where the ulna articulates with the radius. On the posterior aspect of the radius, we find the dorsal tubercle of the radius. If I just rotate it here, now we can see the dorsal tubercle. You can also see some grooves here on the bone, and these grooves accommodate some of the tendons of our forearm as they pass into the hand. Now highlighted is the ulna bone, and we're back in anatomical position looking at the left anterior forearm. And at the proximal end of the ulna, we can see that there is a big um, prominence, and at the distal end, this particular bone is much smaller. So this is opposite to the radius. Um, if I just turn it here, from a more medial view, we can see two bony prominences on um, the ulna at the proximal end. Posteriorly, we have the olecranon process, which forms the posterior aspect of our elbow. And projecting anteriorly, we have the coronoid process. Connecting these two processes together, we have the trochlear notch, which I'll just outline here. And the trochlear notch grips onto the trochlea of the humerus. I'll rotate the forearm so we can look at it again from an anterior view. And from this particular view, we can also now see where the radius articulates um, with the ulna. At the proximal radial ulnar joint, this is where we find the radial notch. Lastly, at the distal end of the ulna, we find a styloid process and also the head of the ulna. The head of the ulna we can also see from a posterior view, and this is actually the prominence that we can see on the posterior aspect of our forearm. Here's the head of the ulna right here, just deep to our skin. So if you take a look at the posterior aspect of um, your forearm at the distal end, you might see a bony marking sticking out, and this is the head of the ulna. One last point to make is that the ulna doesn't extend as far distally as the radius, and therefore it does not contribute to the formation of the radiocarpal joint.